Guten Tag everybody and welcome to CNC Kitchen. In a previous video I tested out if oiling filament changes the material strength of your 3D prints. Some of you had been complaining that I used too much and the wrong kind of oil. So in this video I'll revisit these complaints with surprising results. Stay tuned! If you are watching this video shortly after its release, please check out my 1000 subscribers giveaway for which I will take entries until the 9th of April 2017. But now back to the topic. So a couple of weeks ago I added some drops of machine oil to my filament dust filter and found out that for my test parts the layer adhesion was 60% lower compared to the ones with no oil at all. I have seen that there were droplets of oil on my build plate, so some of you had been complaining that I used way too much oil and even the wrong type of oil. There were several comments that I should use vegetable oil instead. Being open for criticism I printed out a couple of new specimens without oil, with only a tiny amount of oil and a generous amount of oil, all with the same settings. This time I used high temperature cooking oil. I thought this would be an easy video, but it turned out kind of frustrating. Keep in mind that the specimens I'm testing were printed out in an upright position, so I'm testing the layer adhesion. I tested them in my tensile testing machine and got results which really confused me. The strength of the specimens without oil was worse than with oil. The strength of the parts with only a tiny amount of oil was similar to the strength without oil. So what went wrong? Can you really increase the strength and quality of your prints by using a filament oiler? So for this test right now I used Spoolworks PLA filament. I thought that this might have been the reason, so I printed additional specimens with Hobby Kings PLA. For this test the results were similar to the ones from the last video. The strength with oil was around 45% lower than without the oiler. Hmm, still the overall results were way worse than in the first test. I realized that I had been using the new tungsten nozzle for the prints which already caused problems in other prints. Before I mounted it in my printer I had been looking at the nozzle under my microscope and the surface finish on the inside wasn't really nice. Lots of machining marks. Also the bore in the nozzle is not perfectly in the center and I noticed that I often had lots of filament stuck to it. I truly think that the tungsten nozzle might be a great thing for FDM printers due to its wear resistance and thermal capabilities but I'm not perfectly satisfied with the one I'm having. More on it maybe in a future video. Anyway, so I switched the nozzle back to my standard configuration, 0.4mm E3D brass nozzle. I printed the specimens again additionally with the same filament as last time. The unoiled specimens were able to bear the same amount of load as last time, but the old ones were even a little bit stronger. Can anyone explain that to me? Why is machine oil bad and the vegetable oil not greatly affecting the results at all? I had seen under extrusion on some of my broken specimens which were not oiled. So one reason might be that the extrusion rate is a little bit higher when oiled. This might result in better layer adhesion. I weighed the specimens but on my scale I was not able to see a difference which would prove that point. Also I've only seen this phenomenon with the tungsten nozzle and not with the standard brass one. Well, even though these results proved me wrong, I'm still not recommending to anyone to oil his filament, because it will definitely create issues and if it's just a bad adhesion. And you have seen that depending on the filament the results can differ. Still, and that's kind of hard for me to say, filament oiling is not as bad as I thought. With the filament oiler I have printed out one of the nicest banshees I've ever seen. Comparing it to the one without oiled filament there is not a huge amount of difference but the surfaces shine a little bit more and it has less artifacts. It's amazing to see the quality of the original Prusa i3 prints when you compare it to a print done on an Ultimaker 3. They were both done with 0.2mm layers but the Prusa print looks way better at only a fifth of the price. If you have any idea what I could have done differently post a comment down in the description. If you like this video then give it a thumbs up. Dislike it if you think it sucked but let me know what I can improve. Please consider subscribing for more awesome content in the future. Auf Wiedersehen and I'll see you next time!